So now I decided to take one of my uh, 2N7000 MOSFETs, it's uh, N channel enhancement mode, and do some uh, testing with it to uh, figure out what I'll do with it later on. But in uh, any case, I'm going to turn the power on. You can see that the uh, load is off right now. I decided I'd come up with this circuit, and we have down here the uh, source to uh, ground, the gate right there that's connected to the output of this trim pot, and we have the drain here that's connected to the more positive side of the circuit. Of course the LED is polarized, it only conducts when uh, the anode is more positive than the cathode. So anode is the long lead that is connected to the uh, positive rail there. Cathode connected to the resistor, connected to the uh, transistor. So we have the trim pot set over here to the ground rail. We don't have to worry about limiting current to the base. Just uh, the current through the trim pot is going to hold steady. We'll uh, probably take a multimeter measurement of that coming up. But you can see when I get about to about 2 volts, this is a 5 volt power supply, I have the arrow here, so I moved it about that far, the LED comes on, it gets pretty bright really rapidly, and of course stays bright. So I'm going to turn it all the way to uh, 5 volts, and uh, that's, uh, that's what we got. That's what we're dealing with in this circuit right now. So let's put this to uh, 3 volts. So the output's not 3 volts, I should have turned it off first, but uh, probably won't damage anything. So of course we'll go down to 0 volts, the LED stays off, going up to about a little more than halfway, so it's uh, pointing that way a little bit. The uh, LED's starting to come on, and now it's getting brighter, and it uh, looks like we're about saturated by this point, but we can turn it up even more. So now, I opened up the circuit so we can measure current, as I said before, and uh, I got the breadboard power supply now set to 5 volts. The meter, you can see that it's set to measure milliamps, it's set to measure 20 milliamps or less, and make sure the red probe is in the milliamp slot, black probe at uh, com. So, what we're going to have to do is complete the circuit. I have the circuit opened up here. So the uh, pin for the trim pot that's going to go to the positive rail, I need to complete the circuit through the uh, meter. So hold that there, and then try to do this with one hand. Hold it there. Now you can see that the LED came on because the trim pot is set high enough to turn the uh, transistor on. Look at how much current we got there. So it's pointed about here. We can turn the voltage up even higher. Once I get the uh, screwdriver in the slot, there we go. So I turn it up higher. You can see the current's really holding about steady. Now I'm going to turn it down. See the LED went off. Now I got it turned all the way down to zero volts. And the current is holding steady. So all this current is, is the current that's going through. This is a one kilo ohm trim pot. So about a thousand ohms. They're not terribly accurate though, but it is about a thousand. And uh, so there's a resistive element going there. That's how much current it's letting through. So 5 volts divided by 1,000 ohms would be 5 milliamps. And uh, so none of that current needs to go through the transistor. The transistor just measures the voltage at the output of the uh, trim pot in this case. So now I put the circuit back the way that it was, but I have these uh, wires that I crimped alligator clips onto clipped onto uh, the probe and we're looking at this is our zero volt reference point the uh, ground that's where the black probe is and uh, the red probe we're going to get the voltage difference so this is at the output of the uh, trim pot so let's turn that on which right now is about this is about halfway so it's about half of the five volts we got the meter set to measure 20 volts or less and we make sure that it's in the voltage slot so, in any case, uh, this is a MOSFET, so unlike the bipolar junction transistor, if you measure it here, once the 
transistor gets above 0.6 volts for a bipolar junction transistor then it's going to start conducting like a diode and it's going to hold that voltage there there you can see the voltage is built up to whatever the trim pot is that's because no current is going through the transistor we just have the voltage that's all that we're dealing with and now you can uh, watch the LED and the voltage when the voltage gets down below 2 volts you can see it gets really dim and it goes off pretty much completely it looks like about let's turn the light down about uh, 1.5 volts you can kind of see try to not yeah about 1.6 volts or so it starts lighting up and then it gets uh, really bright at uh, about 2.4 it looks like and kind of holds that brightness I think there we go so that's with uh, 5 volts we can undo the uh, pins here and make it 3 volts also there's an option if you just center this jumper for either of the rails that particular rail that you center it will be zero volts it'll, it'll turn it off alright so now we got 1.14 volts it'll be easier to see with the light on there we go lights on low and uh, let's go up LED starting to light up now and quickly getting brighter as the voltage goes up and again looks like about the same voltage setting for uh, the LED it's only got 3 volts 3.3 volts powering it now 180 ohm resistor limiting the current when uh, the transistor isn't but in any case you can see that uh, the LED turns on based on when we get to uh, about 2 volts and that's about what it takes to get the LED to conduct in the first place so now for the uh, next voltage reading we're gonna measure the voltage across the load so I have this jumper where the anode of this LED is and the uh, positive rail there so a cathode down here comes to the uh, resistor next roll down from where that jumper is and we're going to put the uh, black probe where the uh, resistor is so we're gonna measure the voltage of the uh, load during this process and uh, the uh, moving back the multimeter is on now of course and interestingly enough we get a negative voltage on there I don't know how to uh, explain that let's turn the uh, power on to and uh, now we got a uh, positive voltage so let's lower this down to nothing to begin with and we have that negative voltage again so I have no clue how to explain that but in any case let's start turning it up I don't know if I mentioned it but we're at 5 volts now at the rail and it's holding that negative voltage until we get we're about a third of the way or so now we're into positive voltage territory that's across the load remember and uh, so the transistors conducting better that's one one thing we know from that but you can see there this is the uh, voltage across the LED and the resistor and as we pointed out before the LED seems to start lighting up about 1.6 1.7 volts and then gets brighter so now let's turn it right now we're at about uh, two-thirds of the way up here not even I don't think and it uh, looks like we're about saturated so right now let's take a look at the uh, voltage across or coming out of the uh, trim pot see what the actual voltage is and uh, 3 volts so it's already saturated at uh, 3 volts it looks like let's return this and of course it's gonna hold that where it is I missed it by one row there we go so if I turn this up of course it's only a 5 volt power supply so it's really not going to change much so I got about 5 volts there so that's interesting the transistor seems to uh, saturated at uh, 3 volts so now let's do another one let's take the uh, voltage reading across the transistor here so we got the uh, drain up here so it gates one more row below it we want to go to the uh, source right there so this will be the voltage across the transistor during this process and off the bat here 
I have the uh, trim pot turned all the way down to uh, zero volts can't go down anymore and you can see we got about 3.7 volts on there but remember the uh, LED blocks some of the voltage let's get rid of the LED and just connect the resistor directly and you can see we got 5 volts so the reason why we don't have 5 volts across there was because of the LED it was blocking some of the voltage there we go and we are back to it so let's uh, turn the trim pot up and we are still at 5 volts and so we need to get about a third of the way or so I think before it starts conducting but there now you can see the voltage is uh, dropping so I'm about a third of the way or so and uh, it's gonna keep dropping now I'm halfway and there's hardly any voltage across there about 0.6 volts that's how much the transistor is blocking right now and we get up here and looks like it's saturated right there so it's not even two-thirds of the way I don't think about two-thirds of the way of course if I go up it's uh, saturated it's really not going to uh, change much through uh, throughout this area here so now let's discuss some of the uh, takeaways we get from this and of course you can look up the data sheet it gives you this information too but uh, it's a bit confusing so in any case it takes no current into the gate at all it's a high impedance input which means high impedance means it blocks a lot of current and so it blocks practically all of it so whatever voltage we get to the gate that voltage holds steady we don't lose voltage due to some current going down to a ground and lowering the voltage like we do with the bipolar junction transistor so that is nice so we don't waste any current and also whatever voltage we apply to it we know it will understand that uh, voltage and uh, otherwise it works pretty much like a NPN bipolar junction transistor but it's uh, a MOSFET enhancement mode and stuff there's a bunch of types of uh, MOSFETs so that's something to look up uh, but uh, I have one of these for my semiconductor kit and so I figured I would learn to start using it and try to use it in some projects hopefully something you'll find interesting so uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one